Always. We ask the questions. What is needed in the world? Is that going to be? I'm Dari Nabogeda in Doha. It's been two months since Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt cut diplomatic ties with Qatar, imposing a land, sea and air blockade. This is considered the worst diplomatic crisis amongst GCC member states. But is there a risk of military escalation? Today, Qatar's Defense Minister Khalid bin Mohammed Al Atiyah talks to Al Jazeera. Defense Minister Khaled bin Mohammed Al Atiyah, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you, Dari. It's been two months since the blockade of Qatar and the GCC crisis started. Are Qatar and the blockading countries any closer today to finding a solution, or are they more further apart than ever before? Uh, Qatar, uh, since uh, day one, was uh, calling for a dialogue. And uh, I think today this language is prevailing in the GCC. We all uh, supported uh, His Highness Sheikh Sabah of Kuwait, and we trust his uh, wisdom. And I think uh, this is the direction uh, we are seeing it going now. You've recently said that the blockade, you've described it, in fact, as a, quote, declaration of war. Do you still stand by that statement? At that time, I said declaration of war without blood. Right, uh, a bloodless ref declaration referring, of war. Referring to the you know, blockade and the, uh, the uh, magnitude of that uh, blockade at that time. But as I said uh, earlier, that I believe that the language of, uh, you know, language of dialogue are prevailing now. How worried are you that this political dispute, however, will escalate into something militarily? Is that a likely scenario? Well, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it on the horizon. As I said, I think uh, all the parties are uh, obliged uh, to sit uh, and to uh, discuss uh, in an open uh, dialogue and to reach to a common understanding between the, uh, you know, the GCC countries among themselves. Yet what we've seen recently from Qatar is this increase in military exercises. So in June, Qatar held joint military exercises with the United States, and there was a third batch of Turkish troops that arrived into the country to take part in training exercises as well. So how can you say that you are not worried about an escalation? And is this Qatar's way of preparing uh, for a military confrontation? Uh, all this training are pre-prepared for. Uh, some of them goes way back to 2014. And this has nothing to do with what's going on on the GCC. The uh, United States is a strategic ally, uh, especially namely on the, on the defense and counterterrorism activity. Uh, the same with the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Turks. We have, a, uh, you know, a strategic uh, relation with the Turk. And all this training and all this exercise are pre, uh, you know, uh, prepared for from long time. The Turkish base was established here in Qatar in 2014, shortly after uh, the Riyadh agreement. Why did you feel the need to establish it at that time? And uh, why did you feel the need to diversify your defense capabilities then? This takes us again, it was before 2014 when we have the agreement with the Turk. We have it since 2010. And this is why the people or the, the you know, uh, some of the uh, besieged country are uh, uh, trying to show that we have done this because of this crisis. No, our agreement goes back with Turkey to 2010 and we renewed it in 2014 and we put a plan to implement it. Uh, again, I emphasize that we did not choose the time for the blockade. They choose the time. But what we was doing is a pre uh, prepared program with the Turk which we didn't know that there will be a blockade at certain time. By the blockading countries say they are ready for dialogue now if Qatar is willing to meet the 13 demands that they had originally uh, put forward and also if Qatar is willing to uh, stop funding terrorism and extremism according uh, to them. So are there in any of the demands room for negotiation for Qatar? I mean, part of them are uh, closing down the Turkish base, for example and uh, scaling down er relations with Iran. Is there room to maneuver on any of those? Let's talk firstly about the 13 demands. Let's take them, uh, you know, I don't want to speak, uh, talk about them one by one, but let's say if we see the demand number 12, 
it has its end uh, in it. So to, uh, demand number 12 says that if Qatar does not reply within 10 days, this demand will be considered null and void. So they are already null and void. Even so, Qatar uh, was open to discuss any, uh, uh, you know, of the uh, 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 blockade country concern. Some of the 13 uh, demand uh, which been mentioned on their list is, uh, uh, you know, uh, is uh, uh, a base where we can uh, discuss, uh, but we cannot have a pre-acceptance. Otherwise, we are giving up our, our sovereignty. Like which demands? You know, uh, we all agree on counterterrorism. We all agree on, uh, you know, uh, terrorist financed, uh, anti-terrorist financed. Uh, this is a, uh, a common principle which all agrees and, and we have already taken further step on this with the United States. We have a murder of the understanding on this, on counter-terrorism and countering uh, terrorism finance. So these things are common, these things are in the interest of all GCC countries and they are, we are willing to discuss this, uh, you know, uh, uh, with our uh, GCC uh, colleagues. The blockading countries, though, accuse Qatar of also violating the Riyadh agreements that were signed between 2013 and 2014. U.S. foreign minister at the time involved in these negotiations. Can you categorically say that Qatar has not violated these agreements? I was also uh, involved in drafting the 2013-2014 uh, agreement. If we, if we take them one by one, uh, uh, in fact, the blockade country has uh, violated every and each article on this uh, uh, 2013 and 2014, i.e., they did not use for a simple, uh, you know, simple uh, matter. They did not use the dispute mechanism. Uh, we didn't know that they have an issue with us. All the reports, the exchange report between the GCC country was fine. Well, everything going according to what we all agreed on. And suddenly uh, they attacked our Q&A, Qatar, uh, you know, national agency, and uh, they hack it, and they started to dictate terms uh, on behalf of His Highness the Emir, uh, fraud and vague uh, statement. And they started all this. So if you go to 2013 and 2014, you will find that every and each uh, article of them has been violated by the blockade and sieged country. Here's what they say though, they say that according to the agreement the parties, all the parties agreed to refrain uh, from backing any quote political groups that pose a threat to any member country and so this is what they accuse uh, Qatar of, of backing groups uh, like uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, like Hamas. But this is not true, we never, uh, we never back up the brother, Muslim Brotherhood nor uh, Hamas. Uh, what we did is we backed up government when there is a government, elected government in Egypt, for example, we backed the government like we did with the previous government in Egypt before Morsi came in. And like that, we continued uh, backed, uh, backing up uh, Sisi when he, uh, you know, when he become in power. Half of the, half of the foreign reserve during uh, Sisi time uh, was uh, Qatari money until they started to return it back with the stages. Uh, gas shipment continued to go to CC after CC came into power. So they cannot come today and say we are backing up a group. We back up governments. The same to Hamas. We did not back up Hamas. We did not support Hamas. We support the people of Gaza and under the international supervision and both way, uh, Israel is overlooking, uh, the West Bank is overlooking, and also Egypt was overlooking what we were doing on Gaza for the people of Gaza. Qatar hosts the uh, largest U.S. military base in the Middle East, that's al Udaid. It uh, coordinates the fight against ISIL, as we know. And what we also know is that via leaks, the UAE has been lobbying to move uh, the base out of Qatar. President Trump saying that 10 countries would bid to host the base if the U.S. ever decided to pull out. Are you concerned? Concerned that the base can be moved out of Qatar. How likely is that scenario right now? What I can tell you today is that we enjoy an excellent relation with our counterpart in the United States. MOD to MOD relation is at its best uh, level. Uh, Qatar hosted Al Udaid uh, when other, uh, you know, denied uh, to host it at that time. We built this relation. Uh, there is a mutual trust between the two parties. And as I told you, as we speak today, we are enjoying this excellent relation. And in fact, we are working side by side today on countering terrorism.
on action. But does it worry you that there is this uh, push to move the base out of uh, Qatar by the United Arab Emirates at least. And also, this is what CENTCOM said earlier uh, this week. CENTCOM saying that the evolving situation, talking about the GCC crisis, is hindering our ability to plan for longer term military operations from Al Oded. And this is a message to the besieged country that they are talking about counterterrorism and they're putting all the obstacles in front of this mission. This is what I believe the CENTCOM meant when they did their statement. In the, in the other hand, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not worried at all. Uh, we have, as I said, this uh, uh, excellent relation. We know what we are doing, uh, uh, and they know uh, our, uh, you know, our cooperation and level of cooperation. And I don't have any things to worry me at the time. But what impact do you think that this GCC crisis is, is having on long-term planning, as uh, CENTCOM put it? I think uh, what they are trying to do is it's, the CENTCOM is trying to encourage the other party to sit down and uh, you know uh, solve this by dialogue because we have other concern uh, today than having a new uh, term oil in the region. The region has enough of uh, you know uh, trouble around us, and I think they are encouraging all the parties to uh, bring this to an end. Let me push you on this for just a moment. So you personally, as Defense Minister of Qatar, don't see any changes in uh, military planning from al Oded as a result of this GCC crisis? Absolutely, absolutely. Nothing has changed. In fact, we have increased our cooperation since. You personally signed a weapons deal with the United States in June. It was worth $12 billion for the purchase of uh, F-15 fighter jets. Saudi Arabia in May also signed a deal with the United States worth $350 billion. That's over a period of 10 years and uh, $110 billion to take effect immediately. So what we're witnessing is this massive spending on arms in the region. Does this help keep security in the region? Does it help keep the region safe? Or are we seeing an arms race that can lead to regional consequences? No, again, this takes us to our uh, meeting in Camp David and the outcome of Camp David, that where we all agree that we have to enhance our capability to be an active uh, partner in countering terrorism in the region and stand ready for that. And signing the deal of the F-15 uh, did not start it again uh, when the crisis. This has to go through a long process in the United States, as you know. We have a FMS case. Uh, the foreign military sa uh, sales needs a lot of procedure. So we started this way back on 2014. And the time we get the Congress uh, approval, I went and, and conclude the deal. And, uh, you know, it was uh, pre uh, planned for as well. This is not the first deal with the United States and it will not be the last deal with the United States in enhancing our defense capability as well. So what does this mean then for what looks like an arms race for the region? We have uh, uh, a an, an coalition in the GCC which is the Peninsula Shield and uh, w w uh, no matter who in the GCC enhance their capability it will be on the benefit of the other GCC member because in the end of the day we have the Peninsula Sheet which we are uh, an ally in. Does this apply to this time though when there is a GCC crisis going on? Well nothing change uh, regarding the security of the GCC. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an issue which we will try and we would like to see it solved uh, politically through dialogue through the mediation of Sheikh Subah, but when it comes to the GCC security, I think we will all stand by ourselves uh, to defend our interests in the GCC and keep the GCC safe. As an active member of the Peninsula Shield Force, how does uh, the GCC crisis affect Qatar's role in that force? Uh, the operation on the GCC in the Peninsula Shield is smooth. We have our officers, we have our representative there, and, and nothing has been you know, affected uh, this operation at all. So you don't think that its future is in doubt? Well, we have, we have to admit that we have a political issue today. And the soonest we solve this issue, the better. So they don't aggravate the situation more and it can go and reach other uh, aspects of the GCC relation. So this is why uh, we are uh, always in favor of this dialogue and the soon this issue is come to an end, the better for the whole GCC state. What's at stake for the Peninsula Shield Force if dialogue 
is not pursued and dialogue is not an option. Uh, we cannot uh, speak about the future, but uh, as we speak today, nothing has changed on our uh, status in the Peninsula Shield. Qatar was a part of the Saudi-led coalition fighting the Houthis in Yemen right up until the Gulf crisis started. A coalition that's been accused of gross human rights violations against children as well as civilians, even attacks on medics and hospitals by human rights organizations. So as part of that coalition, one can assume uh, that you were aware of the violations? We have been tasked to be inside Saudi Arabia and we have been tasked uh, to defend a certain point side by side with uh, our colleague from the Saudi, uh, you know, uh, military personnel. Uh, Qatar have not been involved at all inside Yemen, and this is the role which has been task force by the coalition, uh, you know, uh, uh, operation command. Clearly, there was some level of cooperation between Qatar and the Saudi-led coalition. So. Do you take part of the blame uh, for we these were, violations? We were, that we were fighting, we were fighting with them side by side in the same trench, but this was inside Saudi Arabia. We haven't been uh, inter, uh, entered to Yemen. So I cannot uh, tell you what's going on because we are not aware of what's going on inside. But the same, we were in this war, we were fighting side by side our brothers, uh, uh, soldiers from Saudi and the same when you say to side defend by the side. border to defend the border of Saudi Arabia. When you say side by side, what exactly does that mean? What level of cooperation was between uh, the Qataris and the uh, Saudis and the Emiratis? Uh, Emiratis, we never been uh, fighting with them. We never have a task, a joint task with them. But uh, uh, with the Saudis, yes. And our role was to stop any uh, invasion or intruder from the other side, from the Yemeni side, uh, namely al Houthi, uh, toward the Saudi land. Uh, this was our task. Human Rights Watch recently accusing the UAE of backing the torture and disappearance of dozens of people in, in Yemen by financing, arming and training uh, Yemeni forces responsible for these human rights violations. Also Human Rights Watch saying that uh, the UAE was operating secret prisons in the south of the country. To what extent were you aware of the UAE's military activities in Yemen? Um, not, uh, you know, I don't have uh, enough uh, information on that. I'm not involved in the on, on this uh, investigation. And I'm sure if a human right watch is uh, saying that, uh, then they have to uh, come up with the evidence they have. There's some talk of Yemen being divided into two with the secessionist movement gaining ground. What impact uh, would a Yemen split in two have on regional stability? In my opinion, uh, dividing Yemen is the, uh, is the most uh, dangerous thing uh, uh, will happen if it's happen uh, at this time because having all the fighting group uh, pushed uh, to the north uh, border of uh, you know of Yemen and to the south southern border of Saudi this will put a lot of pressure on our stability uh, uh, in the region let me ask you about Libya because the military in Libya accuses Qatar of what it calls sponsoring terrorism, uh, saying Qatar attempts to destabilize uh, the country. What is the Qatari role in Libya right now? The same people who are accusing Qatar in Libya uh, in front of the whole world have executed brutally. And, uh, you know, uh, they took us to the mid-eve time when they executed 20 people in front of all the camera. This was al Warfali, one of the Haftar commander. So the so same people who are accusing Qatar of uh, destabilizing Libya are working, uh, you know, in the front and on the, the, the eyes of the world uh, of destabilizing Libya. Our situation in Libya is very clear. We support the, uh, the, the government which has been formed in the uh, in Morocco and we keep do so. Our, uh, we are in line with our uh, ally, uh, you know, and the international uh, uh, intention uh, to bring everybody in Libya together. Egypt also leveling the same accusations of Qatar. Egypt saying that uh, Qatar is supporting terrorist groups in Libya. Are they both wrong? Well, Egypt is fighting with Haftar, and Haftar shows us clearly in TV how he deals with the prisoner of war, uh, torture them without uh, court and uh, executing them in front of the camera. So the last one who can say 
that we are destabilizing uh, Libya is the government of Egypt. Iran has come out fully in support of Qatar during this GCC crisis. Uh, as we know, there are strong t trade ties between Qatar and Iran. But away from the economics and the trade, can you tell me uh, how you see your relationship with Iran from a military perspective? Uh, we never had any uh, military cooperation or agreement with Iran. Is that something that is going to change the longer this GCC crisis continues? Well, again, I emphasize that our uh, ally is the uh, GCC Peninsula Shield and we have a strategic, a military strategic partnership with USA and military strategic uh, partnership with Turkey. We have some cooperation, uh, you know, uh, agreement in defense with other uh, Western country. Uh, this is how we uh, see our military uh, cooperation and military allies on the region. Qatar has gotten closer to Russia recently as well. We also know that the foreign minister of Qatar was in China a couple of weeks back as well. Uh, is Qatar looking more outwards to expand its uh, defense ties? Well, the foundation which His Highness the Emir have laid for Qatar uh, was very helpful during the uh, the crisis because he was uh, open uh, to the world. He made a good relation with all the uh, leaders, uh, most of the leaders around the world. And it's not necessarily has to be a military cooperation. Uh, Russia is a partner in uh, some of our, uh, you know, projects. Uh, Russia is a weighted uh, country, so uh, it has. Uh, uh, it has its weight on the on the on the region. Uh, the same for China. China is prospering, uh, prospering, and uh, Qatar has a lot of uh, relation, uh, trade relation with with China. This is called a GCC crisis. Yet we know that Egypt is part of the blockading countries. Egypt also accuses Qatar of meddling in its affairs. What is the nature of Qatar's relationship or involvement in Egypt? Qatar have. Uh, a relation with Egypt from Tantawi to Sisi. Uh, they decided to demonize Qatar for some reason, which we don't uh, understand. We worked closely uh, after the uh, military coup in Egypt with the, our ally and colleagues, the American, to try to help bring everybody to the table so we stop the bloodshed. Unfortunately, they decided to take this line, hard line, and uh, we have nothing to do uh, with their internal affair whatsoever. Not according to the foreign minister who recently said that Doha's government has been interfering in the Egyptian interior affairs since 1996. Their foreign minister should consider, uh, concentrate on his country rather than you know, uh, accusing other country. If he concentrated on the uh, prosperity of his country, he might reach uh, you know, and uh, get uh, something. But uh, trying to accuse countries without uh, uh, without uh, any evidence, uh, just for, uh, you know, uh, financial, getting an illegitimate financial aid, this is, will not work. We, and, uh, we in Qatar, uh, very much would like to see stability in Egypt. Egypt stability is the region stability, and we always intend uh, to keep it this way. Is the GCC crisis ultimately fixable and by when? I believe it's fixable, but it needs to uh, start soon. Uh, you know, we should put all our weight behind the Sheikh Sabah uh, to bring this mediation uh, to a success uh, level. And uh, the more we wait, the longer uh, it's prolonged, I think it will aggravate the, the relation more and more. So are you saying then that the future of the GCC will be in doubt? Well, if we stayed, uh, if we uh, stays on a stalemate situation, uh, it will be jeopardized, uh, if I may say. But I think with the uh, with the uh, wisdom of Sheikh Sabah, he will not uh, let it go to this far. Defense Minister of Qatar, Khalid Mohammed Al Atiyah, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.